Thank you, Doctor. And um, I thank Dr. Pendelitis, too, for coming uh, dressed for the occasion. The next two people on tap are Tea Party folks, but I couldn't persuade them uh, to dress quite uh, so appropriately for the occasion. Um, we have next at bat Anna Puig, who is a leader in the Tea Party movement, as well as uh, co-chair of the Kitchen Table Patriots. Uh, Anna served on Governor Corbett's transition team most recently, and now she is uh, with Freedom Works Pennsylvania State uh, Director. Please welcome Anna Pugh. Thank you. So I know a lot of you in the room, and you're sick and tired of hearing my story, but here it is again, because I think it's the most effective way to make Americans understand what's at stake here. I'm so humbled to be here today. When I was a little girl growing up, never in a million years did I think that I'd be able to address a crowd like this in English, because I didn't learn English until I was about 15 years old. So I am an American by choice. I was born and raised in Brazil, and I moved here when I was 15 with my family. My dad was a visionary, and he understood what was at stake in Latin America. He traveled frequently to the United States, and one day he said to my mom, enough is enough. We're moving the kids to the United States. So he got a job here. It wasn't a high paying job. And we sold everything in Brazil. And um, we came with eight suitcases and we started all over again. And it wasn't easy, but we worked hard because we came for the American dream. And that's life, liberty, opportunity, and the pursuit of happiness. So. With that, I had to put myself through college. I went to Baylor University, and it wasn't easy. I had to work jobs that I didn't want to work, but it paid off in the end because I graduated with no debt. I worked at Domino's Pizza, answering the phone. Thank you for calling Domino's Pizza. May I help you? I smelled like pizza every night when I went back to my dorm room. My roommates hated me. I worked uh, for Toyota Motor Credit, answering the phones and uh, as a collections agent. I worked in a gym daycare with a bunch of snotty kids. At the time, I didn't want I like kids, now I have four and I love them. So anyway, so I did what Americans do. I worked hard to become somebody. And I became somebody. And I had choices in my life. And I've done well for myself. And now I have a paying job in the grassroots movement. And I'm proud to say that I have a paying job in the grassroots movement. And I'm striving to become that 1% that has been put down over and over again by the occupiers and by the Obama administration, by all his cronies. And hopefully someday I'll be proud to stand here and tell you that I'm that 1% now. So with that, um, I've seen enough in my lifetime. I've lived in England. I delivered a child under the national health care system. I can tell you it does not work. You know, I was, it was an atrocity when I delivered my third son there in, in England. And, um, you know, the nurses put him on top of me after he came out. Sorry to be graphic. And, you know, they left. Because guess what? Their shift was done, and there wasn't another nurse to replace them. So, you know, or when I used to go for my monthly exams when I was pregnant and they gave me a little jar and I looked at the doctor and I said, what's this jar for? And they said, well, that's for you to collect your urine every month, but you have to take it home and wash it and bring it back for us because we can't afford, you know, to give you a different jar every time you come here once a month. Or when my second son's eardrums kept on bursting in England and, you know, the doctor kept on telling me, I can't give you antibiotics. It will just heal itself. Don't worry about it. So. Those are the things that Americans, unfortunately, you know, take for granted because through no fault of your own, most Americans have never been outside the borders of the United States. And they can't compare what we have here, which is the greatest system in the world, to what's out there. There is no better country. Even under Barack Obama, there is still no better country than the United States. And there is no other place for us to go to. So we have to fight to preserve our freedoms right now. We cannot allow this president, first of all, to win a second term, because then we will be done. But we have to unite, because div divided, we will fall. 
But together, I think we still stand the chance to bring America back to what it used to be. We can't allow this president to continue to so aggressively regulate our businesses, our small businesses, the people who create the jobs, those jobs that I just told you about at the Domino's Pizza, those people are going out of business. I have a friend in Bucks County where I live and he heard I was going to be in this panel and he called me up and he said, Anna, tell my story. He runs um, a manufacturing business in Bucks County, and he got a call from, the, from OSHA the other day, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, and this was about a year ago. And OSHA, he didn't get a call. OSHA came into his office and said, we have to look at your facility. And they went through it, didn't ask for permission, they didn't have a warrant, they didn't have anything. They just came in, they took a whole day of his time, and then they fined him $20,000 because he had some bottles of water that weren't properly labeled. So he fought it back, fought it back, fought it back. In the end, he had to pay $8,000. He fired two employees this year, and he told his crew, he said, OSHA's going to come back in because these employees are going to call OSHA, the guys that were committing fraud, time, time card fraud. They're going to call OSHA and they're going to come back in and check on us. And sure enough, OSHA called this time and he said, you know what? Don't come after me. You're going to need a warrant to come into my business. And that, my friends, is what we need to do. We need to be the William Marses of the world. Because if we don't say enough is enough, this government intrusion is never going to end. And I will finish with this. This, this week, um, the Supreme Court will start hearing um, the case of Obamacare. And I pray to God every day that this will be found unconstitutional. Because if not, we will be up a creek without a paddle. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, I think sometimes those who come to America and adopt this country just as this country adopts them uh, refresh our own spirit by showing us the spiritedness of what it means uh, to be a new citizen, almost once again in a new land, like at the time of the founding. And I think probably that's where the Tea Party gets some of its inspiration as well. And next we have another member of the Tea Party, Jennifer Stefano who is the State Director of Americans for Prosperity. She's also a regular guest on uh, Fox Business News and Fox News. She founded the Conservative Leadership Coalition, which later became the Loyal Opposition. And in 2004, she earned an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Reporting. And I also want to um, uh, mention that she's a wild cat, Mr. Anton. She's a Villanova alum. Welcome, uh, Jennifer Stefano. Thank you. Um, I'm here today to talk about a very, very important issue that um, is affecting many Many Americans, it's a problem sweeping the nation that I think we are not all aware of, and that is whale blubber and pregnant women. Are you all aware of this epidemic? Well, I have to tell you about it because it's something that clearly has concerned the Environmental Protection Agency and our president. A very non-scientific study was done um, on a group of women, women living on the Faroe Islands, and they found that those women who eat a high level of whale meat and whale blubber, when pregnant, have high levels of mercury in their blood, and therefore it is unhealthy. So the EPA and the president thought, wow, that sounds like something we can use to shut down coal plants. And here's how they did it. They took this non-scientific study and they issued a ruling based on it, in which it said that the EPA recently published its regulation which seeks to lower mercury emissions from coal and oil fire plants, just based on this one study. Now, here's the problem with that. The EPA admits it is the most expensive regulation ever put out by the federal government. $11 billion a year, that's the EPA's estimate. Independent organizations say it's even higher. Let me tell you what this is going to cost the United States of America. It is going to cost us inordinately, not just in paying for this, in paying for new federal bureaucrats, which every federal bureaucrat, one bureaucrat, one hired federal bureaucrat, costs 98 private sector jobs. There are estimates that 59,000 people, 59,000 of us, could be out of work because of this. But the president, and you can find the president on YouTube saying this, he boasts, he's proud of this. 
He loves this. In fact, and this is his quote, he wants to saddle coal plant operators with so many new costly regulations that, quote, quote, President of the United States, it will necessarily bankrupt them. You know, I'm all for competition, but when the United States government is the one putting its foot on the neck of working men and women and shoving their face in the dirt and the pain of unemployment, and they are the ones that are competing with us, we have risen to a new level of unacceptability that should make every one of us take to the street, door knocking, phone banking, calling, to make sure we're educating people. You know, I live in Philadelphia, and I love picking people up from the airport because we drive by the refineries, and everyone always complains, oh, they're so ugly. Ugly! I love, I smell that beautiful gas. It's a beautiful thing. I am not washing clothes in a river because of those refineries, because of these coal plates. Thank you. Thank you and front-end loading washing machines. That saved women. These are, th and yet, yet, two weeks ago, refinery workers and Marcus Hook collect collected their last paycheck. 500 of them walked through the doors of their home with their last paycheck in their hand. You want a war on women? Call regulations, mercury regulations, shutting down plants, the president raging war, there's your war on women. Right there, Mr. President. And the commander in chief, he's presiding over it. I go to fill my minivan, women, single mothers, we all go to fill our minivan, there's your war on women. You try to go buy food, you stretch every penny, there's your war on women. The war is coming out of the regulatory environment. You remember the president, he tried to get cap and trade, right? He tried to get cap and trade, he couldn't get it. He said, well, there's more than one way to skin a, skin a cat. So these regulations, he's shutting down the refineries. Sunoco just announced they're going to shut down two more. They're going to idle more. More families. I have suffered the pain of unemployment. I know the feeling of walking in the door, of all these Americans, these men and women, walking through the door and having to tell their spouse, their children, that they don't have a job anymore. That, I could give you a million statistics. I could talk to you endlessly. But I'm telling you there is no greater pain than having that knot in your stomach when you, you go in and you tell your spouse or your loved ones, your family, that you are unemployed and you say it's going to be all right, but I know so many Americans are now saying to themselves, this time it may not be all right. The president is not skinning a cat. He is fleecing the American workers. There is a war on women, and this is what it is. It's a war on women, it's a war on men, it's a war on family, it's an economic war. The President of the United States, through regulatory overreach, has not only overstepped the bounds of the Constitution, he has unleashed economic hell on all of us. And we in Pennsylvania have so much to lose with our beautiful natural resources, and no one speaks about it better than Ann McElhenney. So I urge you that when they come at you and say there's a war on women, and you don't like the environment, and you don't like the children, don't give them a fact. When they come at you with that and take swings at you, swing back and hard. We can do it. Thank you.